lot of hey everybody, this is Pat Colbeck. There seems to be a lot of confusion over what exactly happened last Friday um, when the Michigan Supreme Court uh, ruled in a 7-0 unanimous decision that all the executive orders issued by Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer that rely upon a state of emergency beyond April 30th of this year are null and void. That's a big deal. A lot of people in the media are actually presenting the governor's talking points, which states that it was a partisan 4-3 decision. Okay, there, it's, just to be clear, there's two parts of the Michigan Supreme Court decision. The substantive part that dealt with specifically the executive orders issued by the governor, that was unanimous. A unanimous smackdown of the governor's uh, unlawful declarations of um, of state of emergency and her subsequent executive orders. That was unanimous, bipartisan, unanimous. The 4-3 split decision was on the constitutionality of the 1945 law that she's been leaning upon to make her uh, executive orders. That's the legal basis for her executive orders. So that has been deemed unconstitutional by a majority opinion. All right, so why is the press reporting a 4-3 partisan uh, uh, decision? rather than the 7-0 partisan discussion. Well, anybody who's uh, been watching the media for a while here understands that there is a distinct bias in our media. They're just repeating the talking points that were given to them by Governor Whitmer. Another one of those talking points that I think it's important for everybody to understand is that the governor is stating that she has 21 days uh, for her order still to be in effect. Um, and uh, and that's not true either, guys. Um, it, no, it's effective immediately. If you actually look at the uh, decision that was made by the uh, the Supreme Court, it specifically says that it it is uh, that her orders are uh, are null and void now, not in the future. Uh, now and now by the way was uh, i think 4:39 in the afternoon on I october 2nd um for a lot of us we realize that these orders were null and void from the time she issued it because they were flatly unconstitutional on the face of it they were unconstitutional we knew that but uh now it's official from michigan supreme court that uh her orders particularly those that depend on state of emergency are null and void so i think that's very important now there's a little bit of chaos right because the media is going off and reporting the governor's talking points and ignoring the actual supreme court ruling and what its impact is so here's a very simple way of looking at it any of those face mask signs you see at businesses or at schools saying you must wear a face mask it's the law well get rid of that it's the law part because it's not the law it never has been but now we have the supreme court issuing an opinion to that effect as well. It's not the law. If these businesses wish to go off and continue a keep your mask on policy on it, that's their choice. It's also your choice as a consumer not to go frequent those businesses. If your kid goes to a school where they're still saying that it, it's the law, well, first of all, it's not the law, but if they're still requiring them to wear a face mask, well, thank God we live in a uh, state of Michigan where we have school choice. I know it's not easy and it's not a it's, uh, it's not easy to reconsider where you're sending your kid to school, but if their policy is going off and requiring your kid to wear a face mask while they're going to school or um, engaging in sports, please understand that uh, that does not have the force of law behind it. And every student in the state of Michigan is guaranteed access to a free public education. If they deny that um, on the basis of some spurious uh, understanding of what the law is, then they need to be held accountable for that, and you as a parent need to hold them accountable. Bottom line is, uh, her law, or her, her executive orders are null and void, and everybody needs to understand that. We also need to fight back on that media bias. That media bias, there's no excuse for um, them reporting this as a partisan decision. It's 7-0 is bipartisan, unanimous decision. Um, 4-3 is uh, uh, the 4-3 decision that they keep talking about. Um, if you took that part of the decision uh, out of or the court opinion away from the whole opinion that was issued here, um, you'd still have the fact that her executive orders are null and void. 
So um, it's a straw dog argument designed to create chaos and confusion. Her 21 day uh, claim is meant to create chaos and confusion. And which by all, also, by the way, gets us closer and closer at November 3rd date where she can promulgate this chaos and confusion. And I think that's the end game here regarding the election is to keep that confusion going through the election because Michigan is one of those key sling states for that presidential election. Um, and we already know that the governors use COVID-19 and along with uh, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson as the basis for their um, mailing to uh, uh, all the voters in Michigan's qualified voter file um, a uh, application for absentee ballots. I've got people that have just posted up on Facebook. They're highlighting, listen, I've got my ninth uh, ballot application. They're getting additional copies of ballots even uh, in the mail now. And this is getting ridiculous. It's creating a recipe for chaos in this upcoming election. And uh, just please pray for poll workers and poll challengers that we can sort this all out in a timely manner, in an accurate manner, in a fair and legal manner. But uh, unfortunately, the governor and Jocelyn Benson seem uh, uh, focused upon creating as much uncertainty and chaos in this election as possible. We can't let them get away with it. And the way we can stop back are the following. So there's a lot of different things we can go off and do to, to push back. Um, here are my thoughts on what we can do. And first of all, I want to focus on what the legislature can do. All right. So the Michigan Supreme Court now has ruled that her executive orders are uh, are unconstitutional and null and void. So uh, she's going to use the administrative agencies under her authority to go off and try to enforce these rules and promulgate these rules out through agencies. Um, our legislators need to be aware of Article 4, Section 37 of the Michigan Constitution, which gives them the authority that any time the governor goes off and issues a rule like this through, a, through an administrative agency, the legislature, with a concurrent resolution to that effect, can uh, essentially suspend the implementation of that rule to the end of the legislative session, which in this context means to the end of December of this year. But they can redo this um, next year and uh, implement it uh, um, or suspend it for next year as well. So I want to make sure everybody understands that the legislature is not powerless. They don't need the governor to approve a concurrent resolution. And uh, we have 58 uh, senators in the, or 58 um, representatives in the Michigan House, and we also have a four-seat majority in the uh, Michigan Senate. So um, we just need to go off and start um, acting in a manner that's responsible and holding her accountable for her unlawful acts. So please, uh, that's what our legislature can do. What can the people do? Well, we got to get the truth out. The media um, is giving more credence to the term fake news every single day, particularly here in Michigan, when they promote the governor's talking points, we can't let them get away with that. So we need to get out the truth. So please go to letsfixstuff.org. There's a post that summarizes all the stuff I'm talking about here, puts links to the actual source information, i.e. the actual Supreme Court decision, the actual legislate, or bills that or the uh, state or public acts that were in question. It actually provides references to the Michigan court rules regarding the 21 days, and it provides an excellent legal summary by attorney David Coleman at the Great Lakes Justice Center that just knocks it out of the park and very clearly, Dave's a good friend of mine, and I'm just so proud of him and the way he's defended our liberties throughout this whole crisis, especially, most notably, Carl Mankey, but also the Frisky family uh, up in uh, um, northern lower Michigan. So anyway, um, all these references are there. Go to letsfixstuff.org and you can find that information. The other thing we can go off and do is I'm, I'm just I'm tired of this news not getting out there. So I created a website called puremichiganfacts.com. And if you go to that website, there's some sample ads that I'm putting up there that I want to get up on billboards all across the state. And if I get $50,000 in donations, um, I can get those billboards all across the state. I can't do it on my own. I, my wife and I are barely getting by this right now. I need your help if we're going to go off and do this to get the truth out. So if you go to puremichiganfacts.com, there's a way to go off and donate either online or uh, write a check. Um, obviously, online would be better because the faster I get this, the faster we can get it up on billboards. There's digital billboards. I've already identified where they are. We can get this statewide throughout the state. 
um, and uh, for around uh, $50,000. So if you can help out on that, that'd be great. But now's the time to stand up. Guys, the, uh, the Michigan Supreme Court has given us a great ruling um, on Friday, October 2nd. And uh, essentially, the way I like to look at it is that we've been living in this cell for 193 days, 194 days or so, but who's counting? And the Michigan Supreme Court has, thrown, uh, has opened the cell door up, thrown away the key, and uh, a lot of us, frankly, are still sitting in the cell, not realizing that we can go outside and enjoy freedom again. I'm just encouraging everybody to let everybody know that that cell door is open. It's your choice now whether or not you want to walk out and enjoy the blessing to liberty. We now live under the rule of law once again. Under Gretchen Whitmer, she's trying to make us into a banana republic. No, 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 guys. We're a constitutional republic. And if there's one silver lining on this whole crisis, it's that I think people are starting to get an appreciation for good old civics. They're going off and reading their constitution. They're reading the statutes. They're reading the court opinions. There's, there's no shortcut to liberty, folks. Um, the price of the liberty is eternal vigilance. There's work that goes into that. Please, um, uh, get digging into your civics. Sh spread the news that Michigan is open. I've been saying that for a long time, but now we got uh, seven Supreme Court justices in Michigan saying the same thing, which is nice to see. Um, encourage our legislators to go off and uh, uh, leverage their Article 4, Section 37 responsibilities. And also, one last uh, plea that I'd have is that Michigan legislature, you, you can see it, if you don't realize it by now, the governor is at war with this rule of law. She's at war with the people, the people that put this Constitution together. I mean, that's what it is. We, the people, put together a Constitution. When she goes off and acts in an unlawful manner, she's not helping the people of Michigan. She's actually harming the people of Michigan. And I'm... And I'm not just talking about the rule of law either. Her policies are demonstrably harmful to the citizens of Michigan, whether it's the uh, policies that she put in place around um, senior living centers, which she deliberately hid the data on for so long. And Stephen Crowder on Friday, I was at an event there, were just amazing um, the uh, information that he shared about the way she's been hiding the data here in the state of Michigan. We've all heard that you know, 34% of the over 6,900 deaths in Michigan uh, were in nursing homes. Well, what we're, what we, she left out of that data is, I don't know if you know this, but uh, senior assistant, uh, all senior centers are not addressed in those numbers. So if you're in assisted living, if you're somebody who's transferred into a hospital after living in a nursing home or uh, senior living, Center, or assisted living center, you are not included in those metrics. So, in other words, that percentage of the 6,900 or so deaths uh, is actually going to be much higher than 34%, potentially as high as 50, 60, maybe even 70%. We just have a tough time nailing down what the numbers are, but we do know that the governor's hiding the actual true amount. We know it's higher than 34%. So, um, and that's just the harmful part as far as life and death is concerned. How many businesses have been killed? How many people have lost their jobs, their source of income? Governor Whitmer's policies are harmful, not helpful. And I believe um, that, in, a, in addition to the fact that what she has, uh, and that the Supreme Court has now affirmed that she's been acting in an unlawful manner for all this time, I think those are grounds for impeachment. And if uh, all it takes is one of our Michigan State House reps to introduce the Articles of Impeachment to get the ball rolling. They'll need a majority of uh, votes to get it out of the Michigan House. And then it goes over into the Senate. And the Senate has a four-seat majority. All they need is four votes uh, from the Democrats, um, P Democrats that are willing to go off and uh, uh, defend the rule of law, that are willing to go off and uh, and defend and uh, hold accountable the governor for the loss of all these lives, the loss of all these businesses. All we need is four. And my contention is, once we introduce the, those articles of impeachment into the House or into the Senate, and we start having a debate, um, which has been hidden by the media, all the facts of this case, all the concerns people have had, like myself, they've been hidden from the media for too long. You can see it most recently in the governor's reaction to 
the Michigan Supreme Court ruling. Once the facts get out, I think we can get four principal Democrats to go off and join the Republicans and convict the governor and remove her from office. I believe that the impeachment itself is going to be bipartisan because, I mean, Representative Karen Woodset was ruthlessly attacked by Governor Whitmer for having the audacity of thanking President Trump for letting her know about hydroxychloroquine, which she credits for saving her life when she had COVID-19. Um, so I think the House impeachment would be bipartisan. Uh, the issue is in the Senate. And uh, you know what? The key is to get the uh, ball rolling, get the truth out there. I know a lot of these legislators are worried about poll numbers for the for the governor and we're going into election season, you know what? Uh, the only reason Governor Whitmer has any poll numbers that might be worth talking about in her favor is because she's been getting a pass on what the facts of the situation are. We need to get the truth out there. And one way to do that is actually through the impeachment process. The other way is through this uh, puremichiganfacts.com site that I set up, check that out. But there's a lot we can do. First, first and foremost, though, we need to spread the truth to as many people as possible. Get the word out. Share the letsfixstuff.org site. And um, uh, just, uh, I, I just, I want to thank everybody who worked on the Unlock Michigan petition drive. I was one of the circulators that uh, pulled in uh, quite a few um, signatures into that effort. It was not for uh, naught. Um, and uh, don't underestimate the influence of 539,000 signatures out of a citizenry a citizenry of uh, 10 million Michigan residents uh, sending a shot across the bow saying we've had it with these policies. Um, we need to unlock our state. So thank you for everybody who did that. Thank you for listening to this message. Just remember, here's some of the key things we can do. Legislators, they can go off and enforce Article 4, Section 37 of the Michigan Constitution, and they can also start the impeachment proceedings against Governor Whitmer. As far as everyday citizens, just share the information that we're talking about here with everybody that they know. Michigan is open. It was a unanimous decision. There is no 21-day wait. Share that information with everybody. And then also, if you want to find a tangible way of going off and helping me share that information by getting on a billboard campaign, please go to puremichiganfacts.com and, uh, and get that information. Also, if you always want to find the latest uh, data that the, the media is not talking about that it's important because it impacts your lives in a, in a very uh, meaningful way, please go to letsfixstuff.org. I'm pushing out the news stories that actually matter. They're not the talking points coming from Republicans or Democrats. It's, it's, a, it's the actual data. So if you look at this post on this particular topic around the Supreme Court ruling, everything in there is a link to the actual data. Uh, so um, Anyway, I hope this helps. I just thought it was important to clear this up. A lot of people have kids in school, and um, and uh, they're going around to businesses. Um, bottom line is, uh, anything that requires you to re wear a face mask on it, they can't say it's because of the rule of law anymore. All right, signing off. God bless everybody. Knock them alive, and thank God we now, once again, uh, live under the rule of law in the state of Michigan.